Telecare. We exist to help people recover their health hopes and dreams. My dad was a huge force in my life and I think even though I didn't expect to ever go into his work, the fact that he wanted me to carry on his, his legacy and actually told me that before he passed, even to this day I think has shaped my inspiration for this work. It was a family business with a great legacy and sense of purpose and passion. And we both, but Anne especially, really felt that she could run this company and grow it and transform it. Anne brought a focus, a drive, a passion, an enormous commitment to the legacy that our father created, and a real capacity to work very hard in order to transform this corporation. And just delved herself into the issues and learned as much as she could, brought in as many experts as she could, and would sit down with us and instruct her staff to find a solution we could all live with and be proud of. Jim Collins really helped me think about a framework for how I wanted to lead, about how I might build something that was um, more effective, more um, powerful. The balance that Anne was able to, to gain here was sort of different than a lot of companies that I had seen. That The mission of the organization of really helping uh, folks with mental impairments was central to everything. I wanted to create a culture that was about this future mission and I wanted this to be um, a family business that I really eventually made a family employee owned company to be about building for the future and building for a broader purpose. She's got this amazing blend of, you know, high quality, data driven, mission driven, you know, focus, but it's it's coupled with this deep care about the culture, about how employees feel and about um, a recovery oriented focus. When you look back at how things have changed since Anne took over, it's really amazing when you see the breadth and the extents of it, how broadened to community behavioral health care, going beyond just mental health issues. We aggressively moved to expand our service system into an array of outpatient services. So now today, 50% of what we do is community-based services and 50% is inpatient. She always strives to achieve more and more and more, and it's all for the good. It's a core of who she is, mental health and helping people that are disadvantaged. What was remarkable about Anne is that she was always a team player. She was never, I have an answer, but what do we need to do and how can we work together to accomplish something? And just makes you want to come here and keep doing the good work. I really stand on so many shoulders in this work. My board, my management team, past and present, the boards of supervisors of counties that we've worked with. This public-private partnership is making systems of care um, more effective and more efficient. We've been partners with Alameda, San Mateo County for 30 years. Anne's impact on the industry um, has been tremendous. She has elevated the safety net behavioral health services and has proven to the industry that recovery is possible through services that are stigma and discrimination free. Most recently we partnered with Santa Clara County on the first behavioral health pay for success program in the country. We've been partners with Kaiser Health Plan since the very beginning. The willingness of states and counties to reimagine the system of care, to believe about recovery as a possibility and to invest in it makes all the difference. She recognizes that if we're going to make progress it's about her company, Telecare, thriving, but it's also about building a broader system so that more providers can help more people. Proposition 63 in the Mental Health Services Act was one of my most delightful moments to actually work on that and see that pass. Anne stepped up and she was one of our strongest supporters of Proposition 63 and now it's generating two billion dollars a year for mental health services in California. I will never forget that. What makes and the most passionate is seeing that the mission is, is being accomplished in the sense that 
we are really continuing to grow and to serve and care for people that really need, need our help. What Anne has done and continues to do is to show that recovery is possible, that mental illness does not have to be a life sentence of disconnection and unemployment. That takes leadership. That takes somebody who is willing to commit their life and their business to the proposition that no one should be forgotten. That's what telecare does, that's what Ann does. We barely scratched the surface in terms of the need for behavioral health services and there's so many threats um, out there. So looking towards the future around whole health and the importance of integrated behavioral health with substance use and with physical health. We're working very hard on models of, of population health that, that will deal with that. So those are areas that could easily take another you know, 20 years to make a, a dent in. So that's a very important and powerful um, and exciting, exciting for direction for us to be moving in. Everyone at Telecare, this isn't just a job. This is really a place to do very meaningful and important work. And I think a characteristic Telecare employee feels darn proud about that. so much. Thank you so much. Well, my dear friend Larry Bear, where's Larry? <laughs> or Lair Bear, as I used to call you at Cal. Thank you so much for your gracious introduction and thank you to the Bay Area Council for this tremendous honor. <clears throat> When Larry and I were in student government at Cal, we used to joke that someday he would run for mayor of San Francisco. Yeah. Woohoo! Now, who knows what the future holds, but it certainly is um, an honor to have a friend and leader I admire so much introduce me tonight, so thank you. I also want to convey my tremendous gratitude, in, sport, in spite of my raspy voice, bear with me, uh, to the other people in the audience who have contributed so significantly to my success as CEO of Telecare. First, as a third generation resident, I am clearly a beneficiary of this exceptional Bay Area business culture, whose sensibilities, as we've seen tonight, extend beyond the immediate needs of shareholders to the broader welfare of workforce and community. It has given rise to and produced Hall of Fame legends like my beloved uncle Gerson Baker, a celebrated real estate developer who sadly passed away this year, but who with his wife, Barbara Baker, have elevated the regional infrastructure here from the arts to education to healthcare. Current honorees, Sir Michael Moritz, Bill Campbell, and distinguished council member, Richard Rosenberg, who also embody this spirit. And tonight, corporations such as Kaiser Permanente, the San Francisco Giants, and Kaiser Permanente with their tremendous call for fire relief. I also want to acknowledge the visionary county and state policy leadership that has made our service system improvements possible. Thank you. Sacramento Mayor Daryl Steinberg. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> My mental health hero, who through Proposition 63 vastly expanded resources to provide critical access to community mental health services. The Alameda County Board of Supervisors, including Scott Haggerty and Nate Miley. Yahoo! <laughs> who have spearhead innovative public-private partnerships to enhance behavioral health quality and accountability. Kaiser Permanente CEO Bernard Tyson and my good friend, Northern California President Janet Liang, who are raising the bar for behavioral health parity. <clears throat> and there are others who must be named. 
My outstanding management team, past and present, and devoted board of directors. A special shout out to our chairman of 32 years, Ken Newman, who has been nothing short of formative to my development as a successful businesswoman. Thank you, Ken. Also, Ross Peterson, our SVP Emeritus, AKA Mr. Telecare, <laughs> and our medical leadership, Dr. Ken Eller, represented by Dr. Ken Eller tonight. <clears throat> Jim Collins, author of Good to Great and Built to Last, my inspiration as a teacher of what makes great companies click and tick for more than 30 years. Jim, thank you so much for coming from, where are you? Coming from Colorado to be here tonight. It is such an honor having you here. My sister and director, Nancy Fredkin, my best friend and most passionate ally in carrying our father's legacy. <laughs> my coaches and extended family, Doug Kerr, my Bill Campbell, Rich Lee, my sister-in-law, Ayala Zadok from Israel, Aaron Bernstein, my nephew, Max Fredkin, and the people who bring the most joy and meaning to my life on a daily basis, my beloved husband, Yossi Zadok, and my two sons, Morty and Eli Zadok. Morty, thank you for coming from New York to be with us tonight. <clears throat> My telecare story begins with my dad, Morton Baker, who 52 years ago, on the heels of President Kennedy's groundbreaking mental health legislation, set out to create an innovative psychiatric hospital that would change the state of the art. Dad opened Gladman Psychiatric Hospital, which, looked, which was named after his psychiatrist partner, Art Gladman, and looked more like a home than an institution. It deployed a progressive clinical philosophy which assumed that people with mental illness could, in fact, improve the quality of their lives. Over the past three decades, we have built on that foundation in powerful ways, disseminating best practice across systems of care nationally and supporting thousands of success stories with more evidence-based services. And while we have grown larger by adapting to the dramatic changes in reimbursement and clinical practice, we have been anchored by our core values of recovery and partnership. I would like to share with you a few leadership lessons, I'm looking at Jim Collins, from, from this history. The first is the importance of continuously tapping into one's motivation, passion, and faith in building anything of enduring importance. I was 29 years old when my father unexpectedly died and I was thrust into the role as president of Telecare. As a trained analyst coming from Montgomery Securities, the logical conclusion would have been to sell the company. But it was motivations vastly more compelling than logic that motivated me to pick up my father's mantle and continue to give me courage to face the daunting challenges of leadership even today. The tremendous love and trust I had with my father and the trust he had in me even before I was aware of my capabilities, which still informs how we build trusting and empowering relationships at Telecare today. My personal experience growing up with mental health as a topic at our dinner table and seeing the positive effects of treatment in our extended and immediate family, which grounds my faith in the need for our services and my optimism about their effectiveness. And finally, coming of age as a woman in the late 80s and wanting to prove my mettle as a business person who could also have a social impact consistent with my Jewish values of wanting to repair the world. Another lesson I have learned from this journey is that while faith and passion are essential, success requires unbelievable discipline in building a strong culture and aligned organization. It's kind of like the difference between falling in love and making a marriage work for 50 years. It takes diligence and enormous self-awareness to build a family business around a purpose instead of the drama of personalities and birth order. My sister and I were clear that our success hinged on it. 
Creating this culture involved painstaking decisions about how I capitalized the company, managed its growth, and recruited leaders and directors with similar values so that we could overcome the considerable obstacles to our survival, such as how you communicate a value proposition in a field dominated by not-for-profits, or how you impart a message of hope to clients while also ensuring their safety. But perhaps the secret sauce that has most allowed me to evolve and adapt telecare is the value we've placed on creating a diverse culture for decision making, intellectually, culturally, even socioeconomically. When you engage diverse perspectives, you end up knowing what you didn't know, while also fostering critical collaboration. In many respects, this diverse process of decision making has been a key factor in America's success, and unfortunately, it is on the decline. But at Telecare, I am fearless about getting the right people at the table with diverse perspectives, especially when addressing major challenges, and it almost always produces a profoundly different result when I do. Which leads me to a question for this diverse audience tonight on a subject where I am genuinely challenged and where I could use your help. As much as we have done at Telecare to support people in recovery, the scope of the mental health crisis in our communities is growing. Teenage suicide, the substance abuse epidemic, widespread homelessness, and the vulnerability of our aging population are staggering. It is unlikely there is a family in this room who is untouched. So why is it there is not more outrage that mental health as an essential health benefit is up for discussion in Congress as I speak? <laughs> that Medicaid which is a lifeline for so many who suffer, is also at the precipice. In the same way that dad created Gladman Hospital, on the heels of President Kennedy's groundbreaking mental health legislation, I am here, 52 years later, working with this generation of leaders. Mayor Daryl Steinberg, the Honorable Patrick Kennedy, others of you in the audience tonight, advancing a local and national agenda that can move us beyond this crisis. As business, political, community leaders who influence every level of civic life, join with us for the sake of our future and for the sake of our children. We must provide relief from the fires that burn our homes. And we must also staunch the fires that shred the emotional fabric of our families and communities. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart for this unforgettable honor and milestone in my continued journey. I wonder what dad would say now. <laughs> Thank you.